Zap Root Riders may just be one of the strongest ground smash armies in the game at Town Hall 16. Now in today's video, I'll be able to showcase how Max tackles down every single style of bases. So without further ado, let's dive into it. And first up, we do have Max tackling down this double poison ring base. And he is going to start off by dropping a flame flanger with a few couple barge just to be able to take this mortar down. Additionally, he is going to start this warden walk towards this RC side. And if we look at the warden, he does have that rage gem on him. And that's simply the fact because if he's taking some damage, this healer is actually is going to be able to heal this warden and also speed this warrior through its warden walk. So with that, the Zaps eliminated the multi Archer Tower, the Monolith, the Expo, and of course that right hand Wizard Tower. So you can essentially see where he is going at with this is because he wants to take down this air defense and bomb tower so that he can actually send the smash through the 11 o'clock scatter side and it will pass straight through the core for the town hall. Now, if we actually look at the spell composition that he actually has, he does not have a jump spell. And that's also because the rewriters are going to be able to bust through the walls easily so your push can go through the core or any particular case instead of you needing a jump because the walls are going to be open. So, starting the Rewriters Ice Golem Titan, he is dropping the Rewriters in two different forms, one on the uh, top upper side of 11 and the other one on the lower side of 10, 30, just because he could have his king going out one side and everything collide towards this middle expo right there. So, Flame Flinger is still going to be able to take down his Eagle. Now, with the Ice Golem CC and a lot of single Infernal Towers you are going to see at this top range of Legend, is simply because they are going to want to stop the Rewriters in this Having single infernos while they are stuck in the ice golem freeze is one prime example way of being able to handle root riders. But this is not going to stop it just because he already zapped out and created a very, very clean narrow pathing so that the smash pushes through the levit, through the town hall, and through this final single compartment where this is not going to be enough to stop the base because with the king gauntlet, he is going to be able to clear the core fairly easy. And this RC is working towards this nine o'clock side going down towards eight. He still has a Rage, still has that Freeze attack. Freeze and Rage both used on the RC to actually push and support the RC to finish the rest of the base up. And now he still has Queen ability and now it is just about time and he does have enough time to finish the rest of the base. So really nice first hit by Max on this Devil Poison but really taking advantage of the Root Runners and the Zap value at the top of Legends. Now let's move forward to the very next replay we have in store for you guys today. And next up, we do have Max tackling down not a double poison, but this time it's going to be a very compact double rage ring base here. So like the first replay, he is going to start with the Flame Flinger. Now Max did say he always tends to look for a great Flame Flinger spot. And also with the Zaps, he also wants to primarily target three major defenses, such as in this case, what he got here, a Monolith, a multi Inferno, and an Expo as well. So I'm presuming this Fling Flinger is going to primarily want to target around these buildings right there just for any potential value. Like he did mention to me, he is looking for any value with the Flame Flinger because a lot of bases are going to have that Flame Flinger value. So now with the Warden Walk, he is starting this on the right left hand side of the base actually. With this Warden, he is having that Rage Gem like we talked about previously. It is going to speed him up a little bit. However, if he was taking a little bit of damage, it actually is going to save him from having to use a Rage Spell because of that Rage Gem he has on him. So I presume he is going to want to enter towards his bottom side. Yes, that exactly looks like that's what he's going to want to do. So now what he did here again, it's kind of key to note is that he actually dropped two sets of Root Riders. One for the king to enter and one for the main push to enter towards this left hand side. So that's really key here because in this com composition, you are not necessarily going to have wall breakers. So utilizing a root rider to use as a wall breaker for your king to go through as a flank, it is going to be beneficial here in most cases. Now with the king moving into the core in this case, it is going to be insane because you can see how stacked this core is. It is very, very stacked. So with this King Gauntlet, he is going to be able to take down this entire core fairly easy because of how these splash buildings are. So there we go. King ability is going off and the Queen ability still attack. Flame Flanger still working on the right. And that did keep everything actually going straight into the core and up towards 12 o'clock to finish towards this rest of the base there. So Max sends the RC. I'm pretty sure he didn't even need the RC to be honest, but... Either way, for time's sake, he is sending the RC right behind towards this bomb tower. Behind his smash, 
playing the troops coming off on the right hand side he is getting cleaned up down on the left hand side with 20 seconds with the clean ability and rc ability and a few additional cleanup this is going to be way more enough so really great approach here by max making sure he actually funnels properly by using the root rider for the king a really great touch and play by that but now with both ring bases already taken a look at we're going to move to the teaser base all right and next up we do have fluxy right here now max is going to start off with this warning walk and like i really previously have talked about that rage him on that ward you could really already see that health going down from this expo but with that rage healers on that warden it actually preserves this rage spell that you actually wouldn't have to necessarily need to use so with the flinger working on this top side you can actually see this town hall is fairly exposed there so max is going to take advantage of the zap that it's given to him where he got the abyss tower the expo and of course the monolith so now with this water wall picking off this expo there's nothing major threat that can actually target this flame flinger to take it down so max is now going to be able to also reach that scatter shot in there which is fairly nice because now this setup is going to be super narrow where the root riders are going to be entering right towards this single inferno where this queen is the flinger is pretty safe for that tall hall right there we are going to have root riders moving into this right hand side towards this board the five o'clock side of the base where his king is going to be targeted by the single inferno but that's going to be okay because the root riders is the main push that's going through this core and they have nowhere to really go other than straight into this core of the base so really super nice because now he's actually using the warning ability to protect every one of his root riders because he still has two rages left after using that first rage to get into the base so this with three rages it's actually really super nice because you have so many spells to work with and to constantly rage your troops up while having that rage him on that warning it's going to be really super nice to have so with the queen ability still attack he still has the rc ability he still has a rage up freeze as well the flame flinger does take the town hall down and is tanking the back end now everything did fizzle out at the end because of all the damage of the multi ultra tower and that single inferno because as i previously said single inferno does the most damage towards these root riders heads to why a lot of people are actually leaning towards having single infernos but none other than that this is going to be another crushing triple with a swag rc ability a swag clean ability and of course the swag freeze here on another zap root rider attack here on this base for another 40 cups for max so now let's proceed and move on to the very next base which will highlight a box base and next up it is going to be on a really annoying looking box base where it has three single infernos so to start things off he is going to start with the narrow warren walk towards that nine o'clock side to simply pick off some defenses now he is actually zapping three buildings there i believe that that was the scatter shot the expo and of course the rage tower so now looking at this first glance there is really not a lot of flame flinger value so i'm actually curious of what type of siege machine he's interested in potentially using maybe to seek yes the siege barrack it is going to be now this one i'm pretty sure he is going to want to enter into the of this single compartment and use the king and the siege barrack potentially on the outside towards the top right hand scatter shot right up here or that so rewriters moving along towards the left it is going to pass straight into these walls and trying to bust through it so that the queen takes a fairly nice pathing inside of the base so that single does actually locked on to that one but luckily he did see that and went ahead and froze that because that one ability would have popped off super duper early but nonetheless the ice golden freeze did actually pop and and froze both of those air heroes which is super nice because now these root riders are not going to necessarily take as much damage now if we look at the core here where the cc is where the heroes were placed it actually made the root riders go around the singles a little bit so these singles could be a little bit of a threat but luckily with the king and the siege bear clearing out the 12 o'clock scatter shot it pushed everything to turn right back into the single and now with the queen ability locking up the town hall he is going to be able to secure that town hall tank down and manage to get some additional buildings afterwards now what he does have left here is the king he does have siege bear troops and he is really playing the rc fairly nice here just because he knew he couldn't be able to send the rc to the bottom side and there'd be potential skelly traps so he is going to go behind the single 
and take down the single, which is the major threat, take down the RC. So that with this raid spell, he is going to be able to run this raid spell through this multi ultra tower to help clean and push as fast as possible through the rest of the base so he can get the cleanup down with those jetties to keep them alive so they can support on that cleanup. So really nice there. Incorporating the Fox with the Diggy is really the best combination you can have on this RC. So that was a super duper nice hit attack there from Max for yet another 40 cups. And last up, what we do have here is going to be the diamond base that is Rage and the Poison. As you can see, the value of that Rage is pretty deadly there. So nonetheless here, Water walk early, he is dropping a barb and archers to tank that mortar so that flame flame can already get to work on that 12 o'clock side. Because I am going to assume he is going to aim for the ricochet and that multi-archer tower right there with that flame flanger. So with the zaps, as you see right there into the core of the base, he took out the inferno, the expo, and the rage tower. So now, with the help of the flame flanger, you can already take a look and see exactly how narrow this pathing is where the smash is going to enter towards this side and push towards the town hall on that particular right multi there. So being a little bit patient there because he wants to take down the bomb tower, he is going to try and take down the king as well. And with the rage gem on this warden, it actually speed this process up a little bit and to take down these buildings so that you don't run into a potential time fail because using rewriters at some point in case of time, you are always going to run into problems of time failing. So having that rage gem on the warden can actually prevent that because of how he is going to be speeding up and into his walk and of course help some of these troops push through the core of the base just like in this particular attack. So Flame Flanker still moving along at the 12 o'clock side. He does have a Yeti at 6 o'clock to actually take down the Archer Tower so that nothing goes down and out around the base because he wants everything to go straight through the core there. So he is still hanging on to this warding ability right here because I presume he just wants to get through the core and then use the ability because you can already take a look and see both of these sweepers are pushing the healers back which can be an issue here because the healers are never catching back up to give these rewriters the healing that it needs. Now he pops the warrior ability, which all these blades are going to be able to absorb and pull any potential traps. We still have the flame flanger picking off that scatter shot at the top side, but ideally all he needs here is just a rewriter to open the wall of the town hall compartment because there's nothing at 12, nothing at 6. The only main threat is the town hall and of course the monolith, in which this case here, he has an RC still, a Rage, and a Freeze, in which I'm going to assume he's going to use it on the Monolith because there's no other place to really use it. So with the RC there, with the Fox, it's going to be really a nice touch at the end because of its Fox invincibility there. Going invisible, and if there were ground skellies, it would swap and go away from the RC and go to the Queen, for instance, here. So... Max is going to be finishing this up with yet another triple. He's got both hero abilities, Swag the Queen and the RC ability. And really, this just goes to show how dominant you can be with the Zap Root Riders as long as you're able to pick off a Flame Flinger value and, of course, identifying that Zap value. All right, and that's going to conclude it for today's video. I would like to thank Max for allowing us to cover all of those attacks. Those were really great Zap Root Rider attacks right there. So as we take a look here, he is ranked 21 in the world. I do know he's had a good amount of 300 plus days. So really good job to him. But if you guys like this video, make sure you guys go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. Feel free to let me know what you guys would like to see in our next video. Additionally, we will go ahead and link that army composition that Max did share with us for today. But until then, guys, I'll catch you guys later on the next one. Ghost out.